But anyways, we finally made it. This is our last talk. <laughs> he's Axel, uh, and he's gonna tell us CMS based on Neo4j. I think that I'm very curious why he took CMS uh, the graph databases to do a content management system. So, thank you, and yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Perel. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, so, last talk to tonight, uh, this evening. Um, and um, yeah, I want to tell you something about uh, our CMS based on E4J, uh, which we started developing in 2010. So, we have some kind of uh, history with uh, E4J already. Three years is uh, kind of kind of long time. So, we collected uh, lots of lessons learned. So. Uh, first, I thought that, that will be the uh, easiest talk ever, <laughs> um, but uh, I was wrong because it's not so so easy to um, to separate the the really big lessons learned from the from the whole bunch of lessons learned. So um, I will try to stick to the most important uh, lesson le lessons learned, um, and as you probably most of you know. The big lessons are always the ones which hurt. So, if you uh, realized after some some hours, maybe days or weeks or even months of developing or thinking about something uh, in a different way, you realize that you did something wrong. You made mistakes, but of course that's uh, that's uh, okay. So if you learn and do things better afterwards, then you have some lessons learned, and well, your product or your system is better afterwards. So, a uh, little bit about, about my, um, my background. Um, I was, uh, in my former life, I was uh, uh, doing some enterprise content management stuff, uh, uh, first with Oracle, but only two, two years after that we started our own company and developed an enterprise content management system based on Oracle, Oracle Content Management SDK, if someone, or IFS, Internet File System, if someone of you knows this kind of stuff basically was kind of a uh, file system um, in a re relational database. So, um, when we started Structure, most people just ask uh, why? Why do you, why did you create a new content management system? Because there are thousands or millions or trillions of content management systems in each flavor. So, that's a very good question. Um, one one major part of this, uh, one, one major answer for this is, of course, because it makes a lot of fun creating new things. But there are some uh, thoughts we had in mind, uh, what could we improve um, on content management systems. So, uh, this is the classic picture, page rendering. Um, in fact, how does it work in a, real, uh, in, in a classic way? You have a relational database with lots of tables storing page templates. You have an object relational mapping layer which translates your or joins your table-based data into something like uh, what's 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 an object graph, um, and the problems in content management uh, ma management in the content management area are uh, mostly trees and lists and so on. So you have create data objects and um, you render them in a template engine. Uh, through these page templates and the web server serve the pages with the data. So this is this was the situation, um, and we wanted to change it to um, this picture. Um, data objects, the content graph in your in your business logic, a one-to-one -one mapping to the database. So graph database is perfect matched for that, and just a rendering engine, no template engine at all. So that was the basic idea. Of course, you needed a web server. And, and why? Why should we do that? Because, I mean, there are so many content management systems which work well and are pretty fast. Um, but they are only, if the data becomes complex or you have lots of data, they have to do lots of, uh, lots of caching. So we wanted to get rid of uh, caching, some caching layers. So we had some. Recently, we did some benchmarks. That was a medium complex website, a st static website, or even some website uh, with WordPress, Drupal, and uh, Structure, and uh, 
without com completely completely without caching, and we had a performance gain of about, um, as you see, four to five. Um, with caching, of course, some content management systems are very, very well, some not, even with caching. Uh, and the plain Apache static file served from the plain Apache is, of course, three times faster. So let's, but let's come back to the early days because I wanted to show some, some history. So um, this is something, uh, uh, it's actually not mine, uh, but the other guy, the other structure guy, my brother here, created this uh, uh, cool picture. This was just some brainstorming what we wanted to achieve with some buzzwords in it. So we had notes and a UI and, and renderer with cache. Uh, and a service layer and something like that. And um, after several months, uh, we created something which looked like that. So this is uh, the first UI version we created. Um, and uh, I will demonstrate this one because we have one instance still running. But I try to explain what from the technical uh, point of view because uh, we think it's more interesting for you what, what's, what's behind. So. The focus in this early version was, or at the beginning was, to, to create a standalone CMS, just like any other CMS, you know, just a naive uh, approach. So no focus on backend at all. Um, so we created a J2E web application with embedded Neo4j. So one of the um, reasons for choosing Neo4j, this is an often, often uh, a question which is uh, uh, asked often. We needed maximum or we wanted to to have maximum performance so as um, the um, I think Rene told us to, to today already so it's, it's always uh, the best uh, thing to to take the core API for maximum performance um, the technical uh, architecture was it was uh, basically an Apache click um, web application does who does know Apache click yeah, someone. It's something like it's a uh, Java web component framework, something like uh, Tapestry or um, like uh, how does the other G G Wicked or GWTs. It's very easy and very simple, very straightforward. So we choose that for the beginning. Um, and we had some classic templates with uh, free market template code in it. And the data model, the most important thing, I think, is was one large tree with uh, some kind of has child and link and use template relationships and data relationships. So um, it's uh, demo time. So hopefully I can show you this one. Where is it? Here. Here. Can you see it? Is it? Oh, I don't know which resolution. It's smaller. It's like... Uh, yeah, it's better. Or yeah. really. Okay, tr let me try to mirror display. So, here we go. Oh, it's not too big. Okay, but I think we can, can do it. So, this is uh, basically, this was the old version oh. okay oh it's not that big that resolution but you see here this is the one big tree and in this tree there were where the users um, there was uh, uh, even a trash uh, here here is uh, a domain like uh, this is the project we were doing with it uh, here is the the web stuff uh, including uh, JS files CSS files um, and some data, so it what was all mixed together. It was geographical data, and uh, there were the templates, like something like uh, here. You see just uh, HTML code with some placeholders and free marker template expressions. So this was uh, the first version uh, we we published. Of course, we had some, some nice things like relationships where you can see how the stuff um, is put together. So um, a page has a use template relationship to the home template. 
and this is owned by an admin and there are some some smaller portions oh, I lost the microphone sorry okay so so basically this was uh, the first version and um, it was not that optimal so let's get back to the uh, presentation so after the first version we had uh, some external influence like a nice large uh, paid project and so of course you may uh, you may uh, end up doing other things so the requirements there were create a flexible restful API so how does that fit into the idea of a content management system and without focus on the front end so basically we are creating front end system, front end uh, based system so what did we do we we, we kept the core because uh, graph databases are cool for for restful APIs as well and we exchanged so many components in the first place was j2e web application without embedded server and then we have embedded jetty um, we had the requirement but also the, the the idea to to or we we had to connect to other systems um, so we had to to add uids to each node and relationship in the system we had to create a complete new type system and uh, the outcome was uh, as well that we had after that phase we had a uh, REST and the server module, so that the backend, the new crea newly created backend, could run standalone. And um, because it was was uh, the old front end was not uh, that nice, we just created a completely new UI. So um, that was the outcome: a standalone, or you can use it standalone, the structure server, and this, this is the, the the new UI. So our want to explain the new type system why do you need something like a type system for a rest backend of course you have on the one left hand side you have json which are basically strings um, and in your database you have uh, for example in neo4j you have just uh, some data types like the primitives java primitives here in neo4j or the arrays of java primitives and of course in java you have uh, um, all your objects, object type you can think of. For example, if you take this string here, it's an ISO uh, formatted date. Uh, this can be a Java util date in, in your middleware or in your, your business logic. And in Neo4j, you have no date type, so you have to store it as a long. And what we did was, um, after several, let's say, iterations, because this, this is one big lesson learned, to create a strong type system. We created uh, a property key system with input and database converter. The input converter converts between the input and the Java world. The database converter converts between the Java objects in the database types and the reword, although all those uh, two classes have a convert and a revert method. So how does that look like let's see how we can do it here so the type system now allows us to uh, define very easily define um, java beans like a page this is for example the typical page for our content management system um, and all they inherit from abstract node and they, there we have some uh, property keys here which have an internal name and they have a, a database name here and they are mapped onto uh, or by, by that means we can map them to JSON properties so uh, we can do that with the typical primitive uh, pr types but also with uh, uh, related types which for example are properties which are connected through rela relationships at um, another um, node so uh, you can for example with this system you can very easily just by creating those uh, static um, property properties you can uh, model your domain um, and shape out documents JSON documents out of an arbitrary graph 
or you can model your graph like you, 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 you think it's optimal for your queries, but you can shape out JSON documents of an arbitrary form. So that's better explain, explanation. So you can create arbitrary views um, into your graph data with this system. That's a very convenient way. This was one result of this, uh, this phase. So um, the con I wanted to explain the converters. For example, the date converter for is ISO uh, 8601 date properties. So you have two inner classes with, with uh, convert and revert <coughs> methods. So that was the database converter and here's the input converter. <laughs> So you can um, handle all those things with time zones, strings, and so on. So that's a very easy way for encapsulating all those nasty things which can happen while you convert from the one format to the other. Okay, so let's go back to the demo. I have too much stuff here. So new synchronous UI. Uh, sorry, next slide. Demo time again. So now we have a new synchronous uh, UI, and I hope to find it anywhere here. Yeah, um, that one. Uh, but uh, let me first uh, clean up a little bit. Um, the resolution is really small. Um, let me see. Okay, it's not running. Sorry, that was just in the cache. Um, I just uh, clean up some database files and start. That's all you have to do after you, after you downloaded or compiled structure. So what's Currently happening is starting up. That's that. That's all. The complete system is, has started up already, um, and uh, I put it in the background. And I will now use the uh, REST backend for configuring um, the system because uh, that's uh, the best way to do it. So we have a little seed script, which just adds some users, for example, so that you can log in. Initially, there's no user besides the super admin, but that's a secret user which uh, cannot be explored from the outside. So if you keep, keep uh, the one file secret, so it should be safe. And uh, what you can do now is I have to can uh, just make uh, curl statements and you see the user list. So this is the backend, uh, REST backend, which you can use as administration tool. So I've created an admin user, and here we go. Now, um, to demonstrate some features, I will just create a new page. And you see here, um, all the things, all the nodes on the, on the left are um, already in the graph, the nodes in the graph. They are connected by our relationships and spawning the graph. So, but what we can do is, for example, import something. Then you can see that it can serve um, nice pages like structure home. So, and you see these synchronous um, UI, it uh, works with web sockets. So, there's something happening in the back end, and it's get, it gets uh, broadcasted to all the clients which have this uh, page open in the browser. And you see all these uh, things happening in real time. Uh, and I can import another one, like uh, um, an about page. So, next thing is you can just, uh, this is the real URL where this new, newly imported page is, is hosted. And you can even, if you use relative links, you can al already um, navigate. So, but it's just, this is just a gimmick to, to have some, some uh, uh, fast start with, with structure. Okay, so there are files, there are images, image gallery. Um, you have a nice uh, CRUD view for um, here you can um, 
browse and edit your, your data's, data as list. Um, but we come back to that later here, of course, users, users and groups. So let me see, back to the presentation, because we come back to the demo another time. Um, where is it? I think it's, it's here. Okay, next one. How did it work with all these um, nodes in the tree, the administration interface and the rendering, because it's a one-to-one -one, uh, um, view of the, of the graph in, in the database. There was, um, that's, that's another big les lesson learned, the evolution of the page model. Um, in the new UI, um, all the HTML elements are, are single nodes. There's no text, no HTML text or templates stored in any kind of content field in the database. And they are connected together with, with ki kind of hierarchical relationships, like child relationship or contains or whatever. So um, to render this page or this page on the right, you would have to create a tree structure like that. Um, in red, this is a kind of, uh, in this first uh, iteration of the model, it's kind of, uh, it's the name of the page and the local position. So this is the first element uh, in the HTML, beneath HTML, and this is the, the, the second one. Um, and in the first uh, iteration, we thought it would, would be good to have, um, to, to, to um, make similar pages use the same nodes. So the thought was then just tag the relationships with all those um, page name, uh, column, position. So you different pages like page A and page B, which uh, for example uh, have the only difference that the diff element here is lacking, just don't have these uh, attributes at the relationships. So it was in the beginning it was a nice idea, but uh, it's uh, not that easy because maybe you want to reuse elements in different levels in the hi hierarchy. So for example, you have a content element with contains, which contains the letter Y or some text, and it's linked to the diff and maybe another uh, and, and at another place in your page you have a P element, paragraph element, and you want to make something like that. Uh, and this is the same data. So After that's... Minutes, sorry? Ten minutes. Ten minutes, okay. Oh. <laughs> so that's, that's nice, but uh, if you have uh, more difficult, more, more complex, uh, uh, like more complex uh, uh, set up here, it gets you into big problems because this is impossible to express that this Y should be contained in, in the first div but not in the second div, div block. This is simply not possible with this model. So one lesson learned was uh, don't keep this model. So the next idea was we have to write each possible uh, path where this element can be reached onto the first incoming or for, uh, to, to onto the incoming relationship of this element. That would lead to something like a, a node address in this tree. Um, but that's, we did that for some, some iterations, but it's very complex. And the reordering and moving nodes around uh, implicates changing properties all over the trees and on many relationships. So it's a very costly operation. And the information stored in this string here is somewhat redundant because, I mean, you have all these relationships and you, you don't have to store it, something like a path here. So another consideration was just separate relationships for the hierarchy and the ordering. Um, build something like a linked or ordered tree, so where you have child relationships and next sibling, something like that. and. Uh, then you can, of course, say, okay, this element is child of that element and child of that element, and that's complex, but it, it works better. 
But you need an, an additional uh, relationship between all those ancestors and, and, their, and the containing nodes. So the next idea was, okay, just duplicate those elements which uh, once in one case contain the element and in the other page don't contain the element. Um, but we ended up with, uh, and that's the <coughs> lesson learned, we ended with sep completely separated page trees and we sync elements which have the same properties. So we really, 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 really wanted to avoid this, but we didn't find a way to make the other uh, uh, models work. So, and you can get rid of all these uh, relationship properties. That's, that's, of course, a benefit. Okay, let's go back to the demo. I know I don't have many time. The most important or interesting parts, I hope I can show you that. Uh, let's, uh, we have some, sorry, five minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, five minutes, including questions? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sorry? Then you gotta skip the questions. Uh, okay. So I, would, uh, I wanted to show you, okay, I skipped the demo and I, I, I just explained the theory, okay? So what we can do with structure now is to render arbitrary data trees with uh, arbitrary markup. So I uh, think maybe the, um, for example, uh, take this data tree, could be everything, okay? And you have, but you want to, want to render a menu like unordered list with list elements, with a content element, with a text node, with con which contains a placeholder for the name of a data element. And uh, what you can do is just connect the root node of your markup tree with the root node of your data tree and um, let structure do the rendering. And this is the alg algorithm for you to read maybe afterwards. So uh, it basically goes uh, through the uh, data trees and for each child on each level it renders the respective subnodes of the markup tree. So you can very easily create uh, dynamic um, um, and nice looking structures in, in your page from an arbitrary data tree. So um, now we are in kind of convergence phase. We have the backend as a mature basis. We want to make the UI as convenient as possible and to, to have all these uh, functionality you need to administrate the, 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 the content management stuff um, in the backend. Uh, we would like to uh, expose new functions uh, as modules, of course. We are in the uh, process of implementing the W3C DOM API in the backend so that the, all these uh, graph manipulations, manipulating the page graphs, the pages graph, can be done through well -known, uh, a well-known API, and you can do XPAR things like that. Um, and of course, as I said before, we want to support arbitrary graphs. So, graphs. so one lesson learned, most important lesson learned, is um, on our way to version 1.0 is, why do we do this content management based on graph database? So I think we want to be a content management system in the Neo4j community or in the graph database world which is capable to visualize very easily, very, in a very convenient way, arbitrary graph data. So, so that's our, our goal and that's our, our mission. And um, in the beginning we had no idea about any mission, so this is the biggest lesson learned. Now we know what to do, so this is a very cool uh, time now for us. So, Follow up, structure.org, structure at Twitter. We are completely open source on GitHub and we have a forum and mailing list. Thank you. So, questions. Thank you, Do you guys still have some questions for the last one? <laughs> we have two minutes. So, what are you using um, uh, or in detail using when you want to communicate? Uh, REST or um, to classical uh, RESTful API or WebSocket. So all these um, uh, fancy synchronous stuff is done with web with uh, WebSockets. Uh, okay. Yeah. Why WebSockets? Because they are 
Uh, because it's fast, it's uh, kind of st st stateless. Right. Sorry? But not lightweight as, for example, server side but, but you can do broadcast, that's very nice. So, so you can do uh, collaborative editing, like, like for example, if you, uh, it's already there, if, you, if someone uh, enters something here and um, my brother would log in and enters the text, then I would see the changes here. So we can do collaborative editing on content nodes in, in this thing. A lot of uh, stuff I didn't mention uh, yet, but uh, so we are, sorry? Both direction. Yeah, we're using the uh, Google. Yeah. How does it called? Push the diff patch match library, as in Google Docs. It's a really nice thing. Yeah, so here was a question. It, it, uh, it's only uh, works in a cli client server mode, or, or can it work in in a peer mode? Um, <laughs> that's funny. In, in the in the first version, we had something like. Uh, we had something like uh, what we call cloud services three years ago or two years ago. You could transmit <coughs> nodes between repositories. So you could say, okay, s uh, push, uh, push a subtree of nodes from this repository to another one. We impl had implemented uh, t uh, on TCP basis, we had some push-pull techniques. Um, maybe we, we, we create that again so that y you can just uh, transfer data from one repository to from one uh, peer to the, to the other. But uh, that depends a little bit on how NEO, Neo does the re new remote remoting protocol. So we are not sure of if we should do this on our own without knowing what uh, exactly Neo, Neo4j does. No one. No um, I wasn't quite clear uh, on what model do you stop at the end? Is it what uh, separating between the view and the data? In the end? At the end, what the model you stopped? Because you described several uh, yeah. models. Yes, uh, the the we are, um, at the moment we are, we are in this model, yeah. On we this one? This one. This is the current model, yes. Okay. We have completely separated page trees in the graph, sort in the graph database, and we just synchronize them. That I mean, it's uh, of course you have redundancy. If uh, I mean 90% of the page is is the same data, is the same structure, and have the same properties, that could be. Um, but uh, it's better than doing the stuff we saw before. For us, for for developers, it's too too com was too complex, was not handle mm -hmm. to handle. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you, too. Before we leave, I have a couple of things to tell you. First, remember tonight, it's going to be beer, food, and everything, things like that. Uh, and second, please help us grab, I don't know, trash that you see around you and put it on this lovely bags. This is going to be very helpful. So thank you very much for attending.